But forgiveness is a process. Let's understand that first. It's not a short-term event. So, oh, I forgive you. And sometimes people say, oh, I forgive you, but they haven't. They say the words, but the bitterness is still there. It's a process that you work through. But forgiveness from the heart, from the heart, is the only way to free your heart from that bitterness. C.S. Lewis has said, Everyone says forgiveness is a lovely idea until they have someone to forgive. <laughs> and I, I have seen that. But when we, were, when we forgive someone, we set the prisoner free and discover the prisoner was us. We were the prisoner. And that's the way to deal with it, is giving up my right to hate you for hurting me. Let it go. A process, I, I understand that. But it's the only process that can allow us to reach back in time and heal a wound from events in the past that we cannot change. Let's talk about how you do this. But before, first, before I get into the how you forgive, how, the, how you can work through that process, is again, if you don't forgive from the heart, you choose to self-destruct. And some people have chosen that route. My uncle, I'll come back to him in a little bit. But you choose to self-destruct if you won't let go. But forgiveness, that's the ultimate pain reliever. That's the ultimate way to get rid of bitterness and to let it drain out of your system. I've seen my own experience. When I dealt with it biblically the way God wants, it was like someone opened up a valve and that bitterness drained out, the poison drained out of the system. And I could be healthy and healed again. And my heart could be free to run in the path of God's commandments. But as long as I kept that, I, there was a major, major uh, blockage there. But you can only forgive when you have a firm grip on God's love and God's sovereignty. And when you begin to understand there's nothing that anyone can do to you that will destroy God's plan or purpose for your life. You're the only one that can destroy it by staying bitter and angry. That will keep you from experiencing all that God has for you. So how do we deal with it? What do we do? Number one, acknowledge any feelings of bitterness. Remember in the lecture on guilt, that was a starting point. You have to acknowledge your sin. Don't rationalize it. Don't justify it. Don't excuse it. Don't blame other people. Own your own stuff. Take responsibility. And I think a person needs to come to a point with bitterness, like any other sin, say, I am a bitter person, if that's true of you. As you dig deep and go through the process that I want, if you sense that that hurt has turned into bitterness, acknowledge it. David was a bitter person. You read some of the Psalms, and oh, he was angry and he was bitter, but he processed it. Here's one of the ways he did it. He said, then I acknowledged my sin to you. I didn't cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sins. Psalm 32, verse 5. Key Psalm 32. Make sure you read that one in this process. But I'm going to quote David Allen again. He says, repressed anger and bitterness acts like a vacuum cleaner, scooping up all other types of hurts and feelings within the unconscious. And then you protect that poison in your life. But taking responsibility, acknowledging your sin. And sometimes people have to point it out to you. I had a very good friend that had to point it out to me. I didn't think I was bitter. And he looked at me after we went through a process, he said, you're a bitter man. I said, no, I'm not. Yes, you are. <laughs> and the more I thought about it, 
I was bitter. There was a root of bitterness there, and it, he, he felt it when he was around me. And then I had to come before the Lord on my knees and say, I am a bitter man. And when I acknowledge my sin, God goes to work. So that's step one. Acknowledge feelings of bitterness. Don't try to skirt around it. Don't try to minimize it. Own it. Secondly, assume responsibility for your own wrong attitudes and actions. What do I mean by that? The other person may be 99% wrong in what they did. But I have to say, was, did I have any part in this? Was I wrong? How about my attitude since then? How about my actions? I have to assume responsibility for what I did or didn't do in that relationship that may have even caused some of that hurt. And the way I like to, like to look at it is my 5%, if I'm only 5% wrong, my 5% becomes my 100%. Do you follow me? That's what I'm I'm 100% responsible for that 5%, even though the other person was 95% wrong in what they did or didn't do. And that is assuming responsibility. Ephesians 4, 30 and 32, memorize those verses. Look at those in this area of bitterness. But let me read them. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, slander, as well as all types of malicious behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as Christ, as, just as God has forgiven you through Christ. Get rid of it. Previous to that, he said, "Don't grieve the Holy Spirit." The Holy Spirit will empower you and enable you to get rid of it if you don't grieve him by denying those bitter feelings. So we come to another point of adjusting, the third thing, adjusting your focus of concentration from the offender to God. And you remember that the forgiven people must forgive, must let it go. The forgiven are to forgive. But if I get my focus on God, I've had my focus on the person that hurt me, the one that I'm angry and bitter towards. Now I've got to get my focus on God. And I've got to realize how much God has forgiven me. And you see, if you have a hard time forgiving someone else, I tell people, I said very simply what I want you to do you said, I can't forgive them. I'll never, I've had people say, I'll never forgive them. I said, what I want you to do, I want you to go home, I want you to take out a piece of paper, and maybe a ream of paper, and I want you to write down everything God has ever forgiven you for. I had one guy who said, would you take a piece of paper and do that? He said, a piece of paper? He said, I'll need a whole new... I'll need a whole notebook to, to write down. I said, all right. You focus on God and how much he has forgiven you. And anything anyone has done to you pales in comparison to the way you've sinned against God. And he has forgiven you for Christ's sake. So you don't forgive the other person because they deserve it. You forgive the other person because you've been forgiven. So you extend that forgiveness to other people. It is very interesting when you read the scriptures. It's very uh, uncomfortable because you realize that when you pray the Lord's Prayer, which probably all of us, everyone watching this lecture is done, what do you say in your prayer? Lord, forgive us our trespasses, our debts, our sin, as we forgive others. I said, wait a minute, how many of you have prayed the Lord's Prayer? Everyone has. And you have said in that prayer, Lord, forgive me my trespasses just as I forgive others. Do you really want that? Do you want God to forgive you in exactly the same way you've forgiven everyone that has offended and hurt you? 
and you're bitter towards? A Christian cannot win God's forgiveness, but he can lose God's forgiveness by refusing to extend it to other people. I don't know how that works. I just know it works. Listen to what Jesus said. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father in heaven will not forgive your sins. I didn't write that, but that's what God says. Unforgiveness has eternal repercussions. And I, I encourage people to read the parable in Mark or Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. Fascinating parable. A man had incurred a huge debt against another man. And he begged for forgiveness. And he was forgiven. And then uh, there was a man that owed him just a pittance, just hardly anything, and asked to have that debt removed. And he said, no way, and was going to throw him in jail until he could pay every part of it. And it's in that parable that Jesus again says in that parable that if you won't forgive men their offenses, which are monumental, your sins are monumental in comparison to what he did. How do you expect God to forgive you? So you see, it's a very serious thing. An unforgiving heart is an unforgiven heart. It's that simple. If you have an unforgiving heart, you have a heart that has not been forgiven. You have an unforgiven heart. See, Lewis put it this way again. He said, to be a Christian means to forgive the inexcusable because God has forgiven the inexcusable in you. Don't focus on what was done to you. You need to focus on what was done for you at the cross. All of your sins were forgiven. So make that list of what God has forgiven you if you're having trouble forgiving someone else. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com. The fourth point on dealing with forgiveness, learning how to forgive people. Point number four is to abandon the desire to get revenge, to take revenge. Romans 12, 19 says, don't insist on getting even. That's not for you to do. I'll do the judging, says God. I'll take care of it. And when it's speaking of Jesus in 1 Peter 2, 23, it says Jesus did not retaliate when he was insulted. When he suffered, he did not threaten to get even. He left his case in the hands of God who always judges fairly. Abandon that desire, natural reaction, when we're hurt, when we're bitter, when people have offended us, is want to get even. But by God's grace, abandon that, leave it in God's hands. God writes the last chapter. God has his ways of dealing with people that have offended us, hurt us, and uh, treated us unrighteously. A fifth thing, that I find to be helpful in dealing with bitterness is this. Ask God to use you to bless the offender. That's hard. All these steps are hard, but they're so very valuable and so helpful in freeing us from the grip of bitterness. One thing that helps when you want to ask God to use you to bless the offender is if you can step back and not take it quite so personally that they offended you and saying that this person must have a lot of hurt in their life to inflict that kind of hurt on you. Just a basic principle, hurting people hurt people. And I've been able at times 
not always successfully, but at times when person has lashed out at me, just to gently ask them, how are you doing? What's going on in your life? And you begin to find out that a lot of turmoil, and they have this floating bitterness themselves, and then it attaches to you. Maybe you haven't done anything, but because they're a bitter, angry, hostile person, they, you happen to be in that line of fire at a certain time, and they hurt you. Hurting people hurt people. And so if you can step back and not take it so personally, and then begin to ask God to give you creative ways to show his love, his grace, his mercy to those people, it works. It's a wonderful experience to have. But again, it's not a natural reaction. You need the power of the Spirit of God to do it. And that's the next point, the sixth point is to act in obedience to the Spirit's promptings. Scripture says, since we live by the Spirit, let's keep in step with the Spirit. Don't put out the Spirit's fire. Ask the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, how can I be a blessing to this person? How can I help them? What can I do? And allow God to use you, and whatever he tells you to do, do it. Now those are just basic steps to begin to work through. And as I said earlier in the lecture, it's a process. It's not a short-term event. But you have to acknowledge, sometimes again and again, your feelings of bitterness, claim God's forgiveness for that, assume responsibility for your own wrong attitudes and actions, adjust your focus from the offender to God, Abandon the desire to take revenge. Ask God to use you to bless the offender and then act in obedience to the Spirit's prompting. Now those aren't just six easy steps that boom, boom, you go through. You work through these, but you start with number one and you work through that, that process of forgiving and of getting that poison out of your system.